Let's go down to Rome. So the first week of NFL action is in the books. And of course, Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, PFT. Now, now we talked about how we respect Mike Florio from way back in the day. When, when I was looking at the first BlackBerry, don't want to say what year it was probably like 2007 or something. Uh, but I, I made sure that profootballtalk.com would load on my mobile phone. It's fantastic, man. And also, you know, Florio, noted Vikings fan. Uh, he's tight with Paul Allen. That's not a thermos. And, of course, th- this offseason. So we've raged against the machine where Florio, yeah, he's a national media jabroni haircut. He's worked his way up. Respect, man. But all offseason, uh, someone told me that the Vikings are trying to trade up from league neighbors. How does his debut go? Had one nice catch and, and a couple catches in garbage time. That's it. That's it. And he just wanted the Vikings to trade Justin Jefferson so bad because he's one of those self-loathing Vikings fans that doesn't want the team to do good so that he can his so that his negative feelings can be justified and validated. Out of here, man. Uh, but he's very important because he drives a Dodge Tres. Long story longer. So just glanced at uh, NB uh, Sunday Night Football infographic. So you know PFT's Week Two NFC Power Ranking. So the top ten. Right, so there's beep, pop, 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 boop, 16 teams in the NFC. There's all 16 teams in the AFC. But you would think that the Vikings would land in the top 10, you know, you know top half. You know, a win is a win is a win, but it was the Giants, sure. So discount that a little bit. But my God, my God. So first off, Lions at one. No. So the Lions needed overtime to beat Matthew Stafford and the Rams practice squad, essentially. It's like they didn't have an offensive line, Puka left. Okay, congratulations there. Uh, the Niners should be one. Eagles are fraudulent. I, I, I basically tossed that Packers uh, Eagles game out the window. Like, there's nothing you can take from them because of the playing surface. Buccaneers, frankly, I think the Bucks should be three at minimum. Uh, I understand that you keep the Lions probably at two just because of inertia, just because they're getting all the hype and they're the cat's ass again. Uh, and then uh, the Packers. How are the Packers still at five without Jordan Love for the next month and a half? Hmm? Cowboys, whatever. Bears? Bears, really. Uh, the Rams, I mean, the Rams will be fine once they get guys back from injury. Seahawks, I think, should be higher. I think Seahawks are, are still impressive, um, you know, respect to Mike McDonald and some. And then the Vikings ended up at 12. So they're even behind the Saints, who played the Panthers at home. But here's what I wrote about the Vikings at 24 uh, and number 12 in the NFC. Uh, it's hard to tell whether the Vikings simply beat up on a bad team or whether they have a chance to be good. So you say that you don't know if they beat a bad team, but yet you give the the Bears all the credit for beating the Titans, even though it took a Will Levis pick six in horrific fashion to ooh, alleged NFC uh, NFC Defensive Player of the Week Tyreek Stevenson. Psh. Andrew Van Ginkle got robbed, man. Uh, but yeah, th- that's your reasoning there. Uh, so we're just slightly above the Cardinals, slightly above the Commies, slightly above the Giants and the Panthers. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Reasoning for the Bears. The regular season is very different from the uh, preseason. Oh, where the Bears were undefeated 4-0 in the preseason. Cool. Awesome. Mm. And then the Falcons at 19. If any Falcons fans had bothered to show up on Sunday, they would have been chanting for Michael Penix Jr. Yet they're still at 19. Now, like we said, the Bears, Caleb Williams, all the hype, 93 yards passing, had like a quarterback rating of 50, right? And uh, acting like he, he just won the Super Bowl here. It's like, hey, uh, I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And I didn't do ish. Please. Uh, again, took a special teams touchdown and a pick six uh, for them to win and beat the Titans. Basically, the Titans just gave the game away because the Titans are bad. Mm. And then for the Falcons, I mean, Kurt Cousins, we've been over this. Like, he did not look good. Falcons defense was aight, uh, but th- they need to make a change of quarterback. They-, they need to have someone back there with some mobility. Uh, and also, you know, Penix isn't like a running quarterback, but he can move, right? And that certainly will help out a deficient offensive line because Cousins just sitting back there, unable to get out of the tackle box, ain't going to help. Ain't going to help anybody anywhere, but it's okay. Breathe. Like, I, I understand. You know, Mike Florio is, is a very, very, very important person. But just seeing this just makes you wonder, right? Because... You can't tell me with a straight face that the Bears are better than the Vikings or that the Bears are better than the Seahawks or that the Falcons are better than the Vikings or anything like that or the Lions are better than the Niners right now after week one. Please, 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 please. Mm. Uh, or that the Packers are better than any of these other teams without Jordan Love, which they will be for the next month, month and a half. So let's we'll see there. Uh, a- anyways, your thoughts are thoughts. Mike Florio, <sighs> dead, dead again. The worst, the worst power rankings in the history of mankind. And if you agree with any one of the rankings, you're wrong. How does it feel? Yeah. Uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Yeah, you guys know what to do. Skull.
production value.